Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the... Gr oh, wait, no, no, no. Hang up. Nope. Line. What is just a blank piece of paper? This is an envelope with stamps. This is an expired gift card. No, that's a cat. This is a mouse pad. This is how to win a free Tesla? My line. Oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, my bad. My bad. Ladies and gentlemen, the show is recorded in front of a live Twitch audience. Without further ado, I present to you the Escape Pod cast. Take it away, guys. One is a Grand Arena specialist from the UK. The other is a territory battle tactician from the US. Together, there are no signs of intelligent life on board. With both having played this game since launch, the one thing we are sure of is that you will be entertained. The Escape Pod Cast, a service of the Escape Pod Castaways. A weekly podcast about the mobile game Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. Live from the network studios of Yavin 4, here are your hosts, Neil Andrew Ayer and Paul Anthony. Coming up on this week's edition of the Escape Pod Cast. They finally gave us a road ahead this week. I thought it was supposed to be a state of the galaxy. Well, it isn't, uh, but it did bring some very interesting news to the hollow tables. Ah, yes. Galactic conquests. No, no, it's just conquests. But no, no, everything is galactic. We talked about this before. Well, they're taking away the galactic. So now I'm just going to be chasing legends. No, 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 those are still galactic. This is confusing. The content creator world is going a little GA crazy lately. And while we recognize that the ideas and intentions behind it are all well and good, we tell you why we think what they are doing is actually hurting the case for what we would like to see come to the game. And while we're on that topic, we sit down with the winner of the Urz versus Zareth matchup from last week. The Gambit Alliance co-leader Zareth will be talking with us about what it was like to organically match up against Urza. And on the bridge, we tackle all the important topics. Like Patreon's choice. And we go over our February fundraising effort and how you can benefit from it. All this and breaking news as and if it happens. Right here on the Escape Pod cast. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of the Escape Pod cast. I'm your host, Neil Andrew, and as always, I'm joined by my hetero life partner, Paul Anthony. Paul, how are you today? I'm doing well, and uh, uh, we do finally have the shiny nickel um, 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 alert working for everybody <laughs> that wants to uh, donate a shiny nickel during the show. Uh, before we even went on the air, really quick, Awakened with 100 Bits, Dr. Jojo resubscribing for uh, the his eighth month. Um, at tier two, nonetheless, Peacock Falcon with the shiny nickel, Hellenix with the shiny nickel, and Peacock Falcon just throwing a penny into the into the mix. Uh, guys, thank you so much for for coming out. I I'm doing well, Neil. It's been a fun week. I have not fully read the road ahead yet. Uh, I did. I I I read it. It bored me. Really? Yeah, it bored me. All right. Well, we will uh, we'll certainly get into that more as we go along here. The Escape Pod bot finally just realizing that Doctor Jojo subscribed for eight months. It's kind of funny. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh my gosh, Hellenics. <laughs> Lennox coming in with five hundred biddies with because of the shiny nickel shiny spinning. Nickels. <laughs> That's 100 shiny nickels from Why didn't you do 100 shiny nickels? You just missed a trick. Why didn't you just do 100 shiny nickels? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, my 
my gosh. Okay. All right. Um, but we're definitely going to get into that. But coming up, we are going to be, we might kind of, oh, what's the word? We may upset a few of you. We're going to admit it. We may upset a few of you because we're going to be a little bit critical of the community. But what? it's for a good reason, isn't it, Neil? I don't know what you mean. I, critical of this is new to me. What do you mean, critical Crit of the critical community? Critical of the content creator community that's going. Oh, right. Oh. Um, well, I mean, it's constructive criticism. It, exactly. But a lot of people will say that it's too. Cri it'll be a little too critical. No, no, it's, it's, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to argue, I'm going to take an objective position, not a subjective one. I'm going to take an objective position with my constructive criticism. Oh, it's a hype train. Choo, effing choo. <laughs> and Popeye uh, getting a, a hype train started by donating a hundred bits. Uh, Dr. Feelgood also contributing to getting that going as well. So. All right. Uh, while you guys get that hype train going and Hellenix is going to be uh, uh, cheering that on, we are going to get into the road ahead. Now, for those that have read it all the way through, some people that listen to us don't technically, you know, they don't go on the forums. So we're going to read some of this road ahead to explain it to everybody. Thank you, Dickie Darkside for the 100, Hellenix for the 25, and Peacock Falcon for the four shiny pennies. So CG Ooh, Eric. Candy. CG Eric of all people. I me. know. That I must have, when I saw that it was, I was like, oh, it, it, here's, a post from, here's a post from CG Eric. Don't see, you don't see a lot of posts from uh, Eric. He's the one person that answered my email. Well, I say he used to answer my email, so uh, it was nice to see a um, it was nice to see a post from him. Um, obviously, Top Hat was busy at the time, and uh, it it might be that Top Hat was busy. It might be that um, Eric's been the you know the lead guy running with the uh, running with this new PVE content that they're putting into the game. I'm more erring towards the side that it's probably Eric that's been spearheading this this new um uh, new event in the game and that's probably why he wrote the post you you, you the person that's kind of the, the the front runner the show runner for new content you, you'd kind of expect them to know the most about it so you, you'd kind of um want to hear from them as opposed to oh can you know going to someone else and say, can you talk about this new new event that we're bringing out it's like well you're the one you're the one leading it why don't you talk all oh, right now i can't talk Ah, look at all the biddies! Biddies everywhere! <laughs> yeah, as I as I just said in chat, they're gonna do this one nickel at a time, aren't they? Mm. <laughs> Ooh, piece of candy. So, um, I'm kind of disappointed though. It didn't start off with "Hello there, Hero Table Hollows." Well, yeah, but you, it's a diff it, It's it's a different person writing the post. So, you know, Eric Eric is a completely different character to Crumb. Who is completely different to CG Top Hat? Um, uh, you know, um, th th think think of it in think of it in terms of think of it in terms of Monty Python, right? Okay, um, um, Top Hat and Crumb, they're your Eric Idol and your John Cleese. Um, um, CG Eric is Chapman. You know, he's the straight guy that just gives it to you straight. So you know that's why it's very textual very detailed it's 100 percent textual there's not a darn picture in here at all nope, there's no pictures there's no pictures and, in there and popeye dropping 1000 bits thank you popeye mm, oh. mm. make sure that you give uh make sure that you give your dog teddy a little bit of uh belly rubs and and treats from from me all right that 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 new that new um that new gif that you put in there with the the spinning nickel is just going nuts. <laughs> that the shiny nickel is going bonkers. <laughs> I'm so, liking it. So uh, shall we? Re I mean, sh I mean, let, shall we read this then? Or? Let, let's get let's get into it. I have not fully read it. You have. You have. Yeah. Would you want me to uh, start reading it then? 
So over the course of the last year, we've talked at different points about the mission we've been on, which is to deliver content more frequently and flexibly, starting with Galactic Challenges. Today, uh, we're excited to announce the next step in the journey. Conquest. Not Galactic Conquest, like I said it was going to be called. Uh, but Conquest is a new game mode coming to uh, Galaxy of Heroes where players will face a series of escalating battles on a sector map that allows them to choose which encounters and bonuses they will meet. Each map will provide a variety of matchups that will challenge players to pick the squad that is best suited to take on the enemy and use their whole roster in many new ways. Hmm. Didn't we hear that about something else? Let's rip off! Let's rip off! Um, sorry. <coughs> sorry. Yeah. Let's keep going. Let's keep reading, shall we? But no, didn't... I, I'm serious. Didn't we hear about using your entire roster in many new ways yeah yeah we have heard that yeah we have heard that they, didn't they they, they peddled they peddled that out with gov with galactic cha with them um, galactic uh, challenges yep oh yeah. by the way hellenix uh dropping 100 bits <laughs> mm -mm -mm. um hellenix is going off today <laughs> he is he is hellenix is definitely going off today yeah all right uh, Conquest will feed, uh, will appear alongside Galactic War on a table we are now calling Gal the Galactic Battles table. We're renaming Galactic War to simply War. <laughs> huh. Good God, y'all. What is it good for? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. <laughs> to uh, remove the repetition of Galactic. Galactic challenges may also move to this table at a future point. So just as I, just as I said, you know, I, I, I called that they were going to possibly call this Galactic Conquest. And so they've brought all these galactic things. They should get rid of Galactic Legends as well and just call them Legends, as I said in the open. Well, we'll, we'll see. It, you know, it will be that if they're just going to move everything to that one, uh, one area on the user interface, on the UI... Um, I imagine they'll call it Galactic Events. And then it'll be War, Challenges, and Conquest. That's what I, that's what I see them doing, you know, in the future. When they, yeah. uh, when they rebalance the, uh, when they rebalance the user interface. So, all right. The, the uh, Conquest will run roughly once per month. Once okay, so month. this isn't a mode. This is an event that shows up once a month. Mm -hmm. You know, everything else on that on on these hollow tables, light side battles always happens. You know, guild events. Okay, GAC goes away for a week, but it's you know it returns. It's there more often than not. But anyway. Um, once a month with the event lasting, uh, for several weeks. Okay. All right. So, hey, look, I'm giving you real time as I read it here. During each event, campaigns are organized. Campaigns are organized into a series of sectors, each of which features a map of branching paths with combat missions and special nodes. They'll face off against a variety of different PvE squads as they battle through a sector, the difficulty of the combat missions and their associated rewards will scale up as the player progresses through each sector, culminating in a boss battle of each sector. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, as they complete missions, feats, sector-level feats, and event-level feats, okay, they'll earn conquest key cards. Uh, are those like the uh, the ultimate burritos? No idea. <laughs> I think we saw them. They were purple. I think we saw them at one point. We shall see. We we will definitely see. Um, uh, I've lost my place here. Uh, they'll be used to exclusively uh, uh, or success successively unlock better crates of rewards similar to galactic challenges which are paid out at the end of the event so we have to wait a month to get our rewards 
as well as intermediate rewards, which can be immediately claimed. Okay, we get some rewards there. There, sure, sure. Um, now, while we introduced a new shipment that will contain certain consumable items that are only useful in Conquest. So, you talked about this whole mode of GAC, you know, customizable GAC or customizable PVP. Yeah. We're creating yet another shipment and putting it somewhere that something already exists. Yeah. So. Wow, this... I, I don't know, Neil. I don't know how to feel. What 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 were you thinking at this point when going through it? Way 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 too convoluted. <laughs> just just yeah, I I I'm very very ambivalent. Like you you're hitting me with a lot of information about, you know, you haven't you're not showing us anything. You know, the you, so so give us, you know, give us a visual representation of each paragraph, you know. As a player competes each combat mission, mission feats, sector level feats, or event level feats. How about a picture? How about an image? You know, we're introducing a new shipment that will contain certain consumables. How about a picture? You know, um, between combat missions, there'll be two different types of special nodes, data disks and merchants. Show us. Show us. I, I, the, nothing. There is nothing about this. That gets me excited at all. Nothing. I mean, I know I'm. I I know I said that I was going to be less excited about this because I got on the Galactic Challenges hype train and I got disappointed. So I'm probably being more pessimistic than optimistic with this because I'm not going to allow myself to be, you know, wrapped up in some hype train regarding this. But it's just, I mean. You're halfway through the post. You're only halfway through the post. Yeah, and I'm feeling I'm feeling iffy about this. And I'm not saying that I'm feeling down about it. I know you're you're very guarded with how you were burnt. Yeah, I mean, I I I got to the end of. I mean, don't, please don't take this the wrong way, Eric. But I I was just bored. You know, when I got to the end of it, I was like, I I have no idea what any of this looks like because you haven't given us any images nothing there's there's no pictures there's no video um that would have you know so if you'd said um uh, you know as a player completes combat missions mission feats and sector level feats um this is what happens i mean do something like you did for grand arena but before you brought out Grand Arena, I mean, all right, yeah, granted, we're going back a couple years now. But before you gave us Grand Arena, you had a video that showed us what Grand Arena was. And then when you updated it to Grand Arena Championship, you gave us a video of what it was going to look like and what it was going to involve. That was good. You know, people um, are more um, perceptive to new ideas if you give them visual aids, uh, just giving them a bunch of text is, you know, uh, yeah, it's just so, yeah. And like I said, we're only halfway through this post. There's still one, two, three. There's still five more paragraphs to talk about. Well, we, we learned about the uh, in-between combat missions. So I'm guessing every other, every other. Uh, <laughs> okay, I, I just got broken by the laughter here because Dr. Jojo has been sitting here making the nickel on the screen spin because yeah. we put a new um, uh, a new alert on the screen anytime anybody uh, drops five. It's kind of in honor of Hellenics because he used to always donate a shiny nickel to, the, to every broadcast. And so Dr. Jojo is is making that nickel constantly spin on the screen. <laughs> Luckily, there's no sound to that one. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so every other mission, it looks like you're going to have a merchant or a data disk. 
The data discs are powerful items that players will acquire that can be equipped to give different types of benefits. Data discs can be mixed and matched to give different strategic benefits. However, data disc has an associated cost to equip and a maximum value of data disc can be equipped per sector. So you remember we were talking when we first heard about this, um, I kind of hypothesized that these data discs would be something that you would equip to give everyone a buff. So if you're go if, if you're if you're going into a battle and it's an offensive, you know, it would be an offense up data disc. So, you know, you would apply the data disc at whatever it cost to give yourself that strategic benefit in battle of always having offense up. Or, you know, if you know that you're going up against a team that is particularly offensive, um, then you could have a data disc that gives, you know, defense up or crit avoidance up, you know. That's what those data discs are going to... That's, that's what I imagine those data discs are going to be. It's it's going to be applying some kind of buff um, or some kind of debuff on your opposition. All right. And, and it's so interesting. You can only use so many during a sector. So don't use them in the early. Use them in the late. I guess that's going to be kind of the kind of the way to do it. So merchants are the other type. Um, they appear at different points in each sector, offering a selection of different items for purchase, including consumable items, which are generally more powerful and value valuable than what can be purchased from the shipment. Just the shipment. If a player elects to visit a merchant, they may revisit this merchant any at any point during the event. I wonder if they're going to put character shards in this thing. No, I don't think it's. I don't think it's anything to do with that. I think this. This. I think this is for consumables. I think the. Um. I think the merchant's going to be there to. Um. Um. I, I think the merchant is going to be there for purchasing stamina, purchasing protection, and purchasing health. That's what I think it's going to be. So if 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 you're going in and you know the protection's already been stripped from all of your opponent, you know, from your team, but you want to use them again, um, you'll use whatever currency they come up with for this, and maybe you can go into the merchant and buy something that puts protection, you know, that a consumable that you can, you know, because it'll just be a little icon that you can just tap on, and it'll be, you know, protection on, you know, put protection back on everybody sort of thing, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. maybe. So... Uh, Conquest has a new energy type that is spent to play combat missions. Energy is charged at the beginning of each combat mission and will regenerate over time. So if you fail it, you lose the energy. Uh, you cannot back out. Hearing that, that means that you can't airplane mode it. No. It's like GAC. If you go in, you're, you're you're all in. If you pull out, you're screwed. You've lost that. You know you've lost that team. So if you go in and you lose a bunch of energy, if if you pull out, the, the characters that have lost their energy have still lost their energy. You can't just restart. It's not like it's it's the oh, same same principle same principle Sig as GAC. Saying, no, that's not true. Sig Sig DM me. I'll I'll uh, you know I'll always take your uh, take your DM. Let me know what I'm wrong on. Um, in this case, uh, conquest also features stamina. Unlike energy, stamina is only depleted when a character successfully completes a combat mission. As a character's stamina falls, their effectiveness in combat will also diminish. A character with zero stamina cannot be brought into battle. However, stamina, stamina, I can't say that word, can be restored through passive regeneration or use of, of consumables. Yeah. So, See? Mer at the, from the merchant. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're developing and tuning, and we'll have more to share with you in the coming weeks. Weeks. Before the event. So, are we looking at... I give them two months. I give them mid-March. Well, I mean, whoever it is, whoever it is that that um, getting to test this new PVE um, has given them uh, promising 
early feedback. Um, so they'll fine tune it, they'll make tweaks, and then they'll go to the same people that give them the promising feedback to see what it is, and then and then they'll release it to us. Sorry, then they'll change it and release it to us. Again, the, right. pes the pessimist in me is, you know, they'll release it with two or three things that the community will 100% collectively go, can you change that and can you change that? So that they can come back to the community and go, we listened to you and we, we agree that this thing and this thing are wrong and we're going to change it for you. Well, we also found out right before the show um, that ships will not be in Conquest no, to it's start. It's just, you know, it's all going to be ground squad. So once again, ships get the shaft. Mm -hmm. Ships get the shaft. And we still have yet to see ships in Galactic Challenges. No, to, to be honest, I mean, the, I, 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 do, I do think that, um, I do think that what will happen with uh, ships is they'll, um, they'll, they'll, you know, they'll, they'll dust off, um, they'll dust off the, um, they'll dust off the mothballs, um, for the, uh, for the ship raid that the, that the devs started. Uh, we we know that they we know that they had developers working on a um, fleet raid uh, back in October of um, 2019 that right. you know was put on hold. Um, so I I think that you know because it's not that they're neglecting ships; it's that they already started doing something on ships, and they will eventually finish that fleet node um, and then you know uh, breathe new life into ships. Well, we can only hope. Let's go ahead. Let's take our first break with a uh, kind of minor uh, big announcement in the uh, first break. You guys will see that. Uh, is it the first commercial, Neil? Yep. <laughs> All right. The new, uh, the uh, the kind of a big announcement uh, coming up in this first break. Enjoy this break, guys. We will see you on the other side, and we'll talk about why content creator matchups at such a rapid pace might not be everything that we want it to be and could hurt us right after these messages right here on the escape pod cast the escape pod cast with paul anthony and neil andrew Ware. hotbot and hot utils is one of the most comprehensive tools for star wars galaxy of heroes with integration into the super useful mod tool grand ivory hot utils can help you tackle some of the most difficult aspects of the game not sure how to mod your roster for a certain game mode? Use one of the many filters that automatically assigns the right mods to the right character in accordance with your guild needs. Now with the digital features that can assist you and your guild officers in territory battles and territory wars, Hot Utils is an amazing value. And don't forget the useful tools for yourself in Grand Arena like the in-depth and customizable compare feature. Got multiple accounts like Neil, but not the time to remod them all? With this one-stop utility, you can switch between your alts and never miss a mod upgrade or a mod switch before locking into GAC or Territory Wars. Starting at just $5 a month, you don't want to miss out on these great tools. Hot Utils is the new official remodding service for the Escape Pod. Cast. Visit HotUtils.com to learn more. That's H-O-T-U-T-I-L-S dot com. And go ahead and spice up your Galaxy of Heroes experience. Hello friends, this is Thaddeus from Going Nerdy, and I approve this message and am compensated for signups for this service. The world's largest audiobook library is at your fingertips, and the Escape Pod Castaways want you to try it for free. Head on over to escapepodcastaways.com and click the Going Nerdy offer button to claim a free audiobook and two Audible Originals. Cancel any time, and it's absolutely free to sign up. Check out Audible and support the Escape Pod Castaways, all for free. See Audible website for details. Restrictions may apply. Did you know that if you signed up to become a Patreon, you could get tons of rewards? Force Go Scotty could do a roster review for you. Neil Andrew Air could share Grand Arena tactics. Or Paul could even help you get maximum stars in Geonosis Territory Battle. Ah, and you even get access into the after show. Sound good? Sign up to be a Patreon today. 
for as little as $2 a month, you could unlock a ton of potential content and also get closer to the hosts. Head to patreon.com backslash the escape pod to sign up. Hello, I am Andy Beads, commander of the 506 Procrastination Battalion. And I'm Camp Director Flair of Gaming Embers. We are the officers of the Chain Gang. For a collection of Twitch streamers that like to stream our Grand Arena Championship battles. In Star Wars Galaxy Heroes. We feature accounts of all sizes. From the large accounts, like Fruit Ninja Mike. To the small accounts, like, well, mine. We have Grand Arena Action for all viewers. With names like The Llama. Ran B. Dr. Zeppers. Mr. Jigabachi. Geek Girl 1980. Rico. Kate Gaming. Flair. Andy Beads. And the Escape Podcast's own The Nev. We bring you continuous game action every day during the attack phase. Check us out and ride the raid chain from streamer to streamer with us. The Chain Gang is a proud feature of the Escape Pod Castaways. See you on the chain, ya hosers. The Escape Pod Cast. And welcome back to the show, everybody. It's time to talk about stuff within Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. Yes, it is. Well, let's let's first get to a few of the little little things, and then we'll get to get to the big thing that's been on yours and my my uh, collective mind here as well. Um, we did find out that we will not we will not be getting any change to Sith Eternal Emperor. Okay. Uh, Doja Fett uh, posted at this time, the devs have no intention of making any changes to Eternal Emperor's kit. I understand this is not the update some of you are hoping for. I like that he said that. I, I, this level of empathy is what we needed. Uh, but I wanted to address this head on and let you all know, I still appreciate the effort of those who spent part of their holiday break helping me gather information to present. The experience will uh, will be useful as we continue to work together on other issues. Obviously, some will be successful, some won't, but that doesn't mean we won't keep doing our best to relay player sentiment and advocate on your behalf. I'm, once again, Doja Fett is saying all the words that all that's that I wanted to hear for so long from CG since we started this thing. Yeah, no, um, re I have no frame of reference regarding Seep, so I, I don't have a, um, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't have a uh, any any skin in the uh, any skin in the game regarding Seep because I don't have Seep, so. Well uh, by, by the way, um, Dr. Jojo, Peacock Falcon, Hellenix, and, and Thaddeus all continue to drop nickels. Uh, but I do want to also make sure that I mention that uh, Geek Girl uh, resubscribed for uh, uh, for the month. So thank you, Geek Girl, for that. Um, what else did we have that came out? Um, we finally got uh, the person who, who I think it was Relic 5 every female character in the game. Um, they finally got their little, their, their title. And to me, she's a princess or, or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it was, but, uh, congratulations on that. Um, and, uh, let's see. We also noted that there will be no ships. Um, so those were, the, those were the big things that came out of um of cg's comments this week on the forums once again as always thank you to sig sig and the swgoh events discord server um for having these wonderful channels that help help us do show prep <laughs> mm -hmm. so. props to the commission yes the commissioner yeah, props to the commission props to the Center. commissioner <laughs> All right, Neil. So, what was the first matchup? End all be all versus solo base. Wow. What well, what was that first matchup that uh, that we had? Oh, the very first one that we did. Yeah. No, the very the very first one that the, the very first one that we did, but we couldn't cover it because they were unable to 
get their schedules was Micaeus versus Endel. That's right. So our very first competitor versus competitor matchup was Micaeus versus Endel, but their schedules just would not allow for them to be able to um, to stream simultaneously. So we had them on. Um, uh, uh, Flair and I had them on the show for an interview so that they could talk through what happened. Because one of them, uh, I think, what was it? I think uh, Micaeus had his go, and then um, Endel uh, Endel took his go. So. Uh, that was the very first time that we had two competitors that we covered um, actually going head to head, and then the second but time we did get one. Yeah, the we second time one. we did cover. Yeah, whatever versus Wigginsburg. Yeah, whatever versus Wigginsburg. Yeah, that was that was one we were able to cover live, um, and that was a lot of fun. That went like that. That I mean, that went down to the last battle as well, which was. Um, which was awesome. That was a lot of fun. So we had uh, we had that fight night. That was very very competitive because uh, it, it it did it what it made it was the difference between someone going three and zero and someone going two and one basically. So yeah. uh, that was a lot of fun to cover that one. We had one that we couldn't cover just recently. I'm skipping I'm skipping one here just now. We had one for GA Center of of uh, competitor versus competitor that just happened that was Kioi versus Lazy Turtle. Yeah. Sadly, they could not stream. No, they could. I mean, it, it, sometimes you just you know, sometimes it falls on days and it falls on a day and a time that just it's not just not doable for a couple of people to get together. Um and A stream it and B stream it at the same time as each other. So, it doesn't sometimes it happens and sometimes it doesn't, but yeah, the that that was a um, unfortunately, that was a lost opportunity because of, uh, uh, you know, scheduling conflict. Well, but to start off the season, to start off season two of GA Center, we did have and successfully and very successfully um, put together DB official versus Gridden. Yeah, yeah, that, that was, was a, that was, that was, a, that was a thoroughly incredible one that so good it was entertaining it was competitive it, it, it was you know two people that were in the same division as he, i mean they were even in the same division as our division you know they were that close to each other they were in the same division as each other um and it was really really competitive because you know um it's it was both of their main accounts so the, the, they both wanted to win it you know because it's bragging rights it's like Everything that I've done on my account versus everything that you've done on your account, um, you know, we're talking like three, four, five year old accounts. And it's a culmination of everything that you've done on your account, gearing, modding, leveling up, starring. And yeah, and it, it gave us one of the um, it gave us one of the best and most entertaining matchups, I think, um, we've had in living memory both um both content creators ended up breaking records um grid had more people watching his gac live stream live stream than, he, than he'd ever had watching before pretty sure about D db's had those numbers before um so uh but yeah it was just it was great and and we obviously we had people um uh, you know we had people watching them and then dual streaming and, you know, listening to our commentary. I think that's what, uh, from, from the feedback that I received, I think that's what most people were doing. I think a lot of people were watching the streamer that, you know, that so people were either watching DB and but had our audio on, or they were watching Grid and had our audio on. I don't think anybody was watching us but then watching somebody else with their audio on, I think what they were, you know, it was like best of both worlds. I think that's probably why we, um, uh, we had, uh, uh, I think we only had like half the numbers. People were, were tuning into our stream to listen to the commentary while watching the, you know, the content creator that they supported sort of thing there. Exactly. Exactly. But we were trip, we tripled and quadrupled almost every single other SWGOH streamer at that moment during yes. that time at that time yeah yeah it was it it was humbling to see everybody come out to that and if you were out for that thank you from the bottom of our hearts we really did appreciate that mm -hmm. now that being said give me one moment 
That being said, the thing about that matchup and also the Wiggins Bog and whatever matchup was there was an intermediary. They were taking their turns through the help of an intermediary, providing play-by-play in color with you and I. And, you know, it was a production as far as showing the battles, showing the matchups. Mm-hmm. Now, we did get, and I'm going to use a word here that may start to ruffle a few feathers of the content creator community. We got an organic matchup just this past week in Zareth versus uh, Urzatron. Oh, yeah. And and that was, oh, that was so, oh. I don't know a person that was not watching one of those two streams. That was huge. That we was were abs- watching it in the after show. Yeah, we were. We were watching it. We were. I was. I had them both on on the after show. I had Twitch on my tablet, and I had YouTube on the PC, and then I had Discord on my left side monitor. And you know, I had to keep on muting, muting the microphone. <laughs> I had to keep <laughs> muting my microphone. But that was. Oh god, that was so much fun to watch again. It went down to the last battle. It went down to the last battle, which was just oh. So awesome to watch, but yeah, that was um, that was um, Zarus main um, versus Urza's alt. His his original alt. <laughs> this was this was the original alt, if I'm correct. Yeah, yeah, his main his main alt account. Yeah, it's it's yeah. it's Urza's main alt account. Yeah, everybody's got their main account, and then everyone has like their. Their primary alt account. Some people have secondary and tertiary um, alt accounts. This was this is Urz's main alt. So you know he plays on his main, and then he has one alt that you know he puts his life into as well. And that was the one that was uh, that was the one that Zarath was facing. And that battle, the that that battle was amazing. Oh God, I mean, did, but I mean, it it got it got. It got to the point where, I mean, right at the start, right, right, you know, from the get-go, Urza had a war room. But so Urza, Urza had, sorry, so Urza had a war room, which was the hall. So, you know, Urza had got, you know, Urza clearly had a group of people in a Discord VC and a Discord chat because every now and then you're watching him and he's looking up and it's like getting advice and help um, and strategy tips and tactics from a war room. Whereas uh, Zareth, he had them there. You know, it was him and Solo and Klesso were there as well. So it, they weren't hidden. They were there. They were on the screen. Um, so, yeah, Zareth had his Gambit war room and Urza had his uh, Hall war room, which just made it even more intense because it's like, you're like, Urza, what's Urza doing? What's he doing? What's he doing? Oh, it's like you could tell he's looking up there. It's like, right, okay, the war room has told me what I need to do. And then. Obviously, he he can only take advice, you know. And the, you know they were they were so, oh maybe put that in as a third or maybe put that in as a second. Urza still had to then go into battle and do it all himself. True. Um, so it's great. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm sure that he was getting great advice from his war room as to what team to put against the defensive squads that Zarath had put out. But at the end of the day, Urza still had to do the fights, and he did them. He was doing them so well. I mean, he had this, he had a 12 banner lead at one point. It was so, or, and you could tell he's like, Zareth's getting nervous and it's like, oh, no, no. And he was doing blackout screen so that Urza couldn't see um, what, you know, what he was selecting. Oh, it was brilliant. No, it was, Ur- oh yeah, it was, it was Zareth doing the blackout. Yeah, it was, yeah. But here's, okay, so here is the, here's the thing though, that's going to change, that, that kind of changes with what's happening this weekend and what's about to happen in a moment um, when Heinze and Urz go at it um, at the bottom of this hour. Urz knew that account. That yeah. was Urz's account. That was Urz's account, yeah. So him having to do it and getting the credit for doing it, he had the advantage because that was his account. Mm-hmm. Now, That's what made it competitive. And, and and what's happened now and what's happening this weekend with both Heinz and Urs 
and Cubs and Arnold is that one of the two, one of the duo that's facing each other is and is borrowing an account which let's let's not get into the whole terms of service discussion yeah no this isn't about terms of i'm i'm this isn't about terms of service it's not but they're borrowing an account to force this matchup and as you and i have talked about and you have said they don't know this account in and out you had more i'm gonna let you say those more say you know the additional stuff about all of this well while I kick back and watch you go on a little mini nev rant here <laughs> while I eat my caramel M and M's. Okay. Yeah. What 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 we want, um, what what we saw from the DB versus Grid match and the Urza versus Zareth match is a want and a desire from the community to see competitive matchups between content creators. And I'm stress. I'm going to stress that competitive matchups. So. Both people controlling the accounts know their accounts inside and out. They know what mods they've got. They know what characters they've got. They know what relic levels they're at, what Zetas are on, what Omegas are on. They know exactly what they're doing. There, there is a, a real need in the community, more so now than ever, because of those two matchups, to see competitive matchups between content creators. Sure, we want the entertainment as well. And, and we got a lot of entertainment from those matchups as well but it was more about the competitive nature i mean especially with the db versus gridzy match the db versus gridzy match it was all about seeing who was you know who was going to finish with the most banners who was going to get a 54 a 53 a 52 you know really really blood sweat and tears into the match so it was all about the competitive nature of the match whereas with the um the urza versus Heinze, and now on Saturday, um, the Arnold versus Cubs. It's it that's it's it that's more about the entertainment. That doesn't add fuel to the argument we're making to CG to give us a PvP single round grand arena so that we can competitively fight other people. You know, so I can challenge somebody that's around the same. Um, top 80 GP and top GP as me in a competitive matchup, what Urza and Heinze are doing, it's it's more from an entertainment value because Urza knows his account. You know, he knows his account inside and out. He knows his squads. He knows what the 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 the, the, the plug and play characters do with his squads. Heinze doesn't know the account that he's taking control of that's going to be fight that's going to be um uh, paired, match, sorry, paired, matched against Urza in that GAC match. Heinze doesn't know the capabilities of that roster. He doesn't know generally how fast each individual character is. He doesn't know um, how fast or how good the mods are on the plug and play characters. He doesn't know, uh, you know, he hasn't made the squad loadouts. He hasn't done any of that. So from a competitive perspective, I, I would argue from an objective point of view, from an objective position, that it's not a competitive match. Still entertaining. I mean, there's there's going to be the entertainment value of going, of you know, of Urza and Heinze going backwards and forwards, and Arnold, sorry, uh, you know, sorry, Urza and Heinze going backwards and forwards, and then Arnold and Cubs going backwards and forwards. There's going to be loads of entertainment there, but to call it a competitive matchup is just... It, it's t it's it's too much of a stretch. I don't believe it to be a competitive matchup because the um the, it's not you know one person ha what one person it is their account and the other isn't. Now I will throw a caveat in there. I will throw a caveat in there if if it was Urza and Heinze and they both had random accounts. I would argue that that would be competitive. So if it wasn't Heinze's account and it wasn't Urza's account, but they were you, you know, they, they'd been, uh, uh, you know, uh, allowed use of an account just for GAC purposes, and then they went head to head. I would argue that that's more competitive than one person having their account and the other person not. I mean, it would be more competitive if both 
um, uh, both GAC streamers had their own accounts, but from you know from a from a for, as as being as objective as possible, um, it's either both the people's accounts or neither the people's accounts. It's not competitive if one account belongs to one person but the other one doesn't. So I I, I wholeheartedly concur with you on on that, and um, those watching the taping of this episode saw me nodding you know very animated <laughs> when you said if both were testing their uh were testing their metal um i am going to once again acknowledge dr jojo peacock falcon hellenix and thaddeus from going nerdy they continue to make that nickel spin you guys are crazy and i love you for it um but Here's the here's the problem with a little bit of what we're seeing, Neil. People or or the content creators going out of their way to borrow these accounts is taking away the possible or what's the word? It's taking away the want for the organic matchup hmm. when it is the organic matchup that's what makes it special yeah and that's what cg should capitalize that it's okay we are making it so these people can match up against each other if they were to go out and do if they were to go out and do what you mentioned in that short video of allowing people to match up privately yeah i mean that 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 that's the thing that that, that and, and that's the kicker right i mean i would rather see urza v heinze with either both their accounts that are theirs or two random accounts that to me would be fun and entertaining and competitive because neither of them would know anything about the account whatsoever and and uh, you know arnold versus cubs uh, the Arnold versus Cubs match. I mean, come on, let's be honest. Uh, uh, it, it's it's Arnold's just going to trounce him because yeah. Cubs does not know the account that he's going to be using to fight Arnold. So I I, I do genuinely think that Arnold. It's just going to be. It's just going to steamroll him. It's just going to absolutely steamroll him. Um, it's it's not going to be as competitive. But if you know if both Arnold and Cubs took control of two accounts that neither of them knew. That would be more competitive to watch, and it would be more entertaining to watch. I mean, if you were to poll, I mean, maybe maybe we should do a Twitter poll later. Would you rather see Cubs and Arnold play each other with both of you know if they were to fight each other, both using accounts that aren't theirs, or one using an account that is theirs and the other not? I guarantee you, the poll would be like, "Oh yeah, I'd rather see Cubs versus Arnold if neither of them knew what the account was." I'm going to stop you for a second. Neil, Arnold, last GA center season, 55 and 17. Cubs fan Han, 53 and 19. He didn't do as bad as we thought. No, no, no. I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying, no, I, I'm, I'm not saying he did bad or worse it's just that they they were in different brackets they were but it, they were in different brackets because that's where all the everything came mm. but arnold brought in four, 146,000 banners while cubs fan han brought in 148,000 mm. and you've also got to remember that in season 1 the second half of arnold's season was on the ascension. It was going. He was doing better and better and better. Whereas Cubs, his the, he was he was just nailing it, knocking it out the park. The first half of the season and the second half of Cubs' season, he kind of started tapering off. During the first half of the season, he was getting more three and O's, and then the second half of the season, he was getting more two and ones. Whereas it was the opposite. Uh, for Arnold, in the first half of the season, he was more two and ones, and the second half of the season, he was more three and O's. So it was kind of like there was an intersection <laughs> for Cubs and Arnold regarding GAC. Uh, Arnold started, you know, Arnold started low and went high, 
and they crossed in the middle. And Cubs started high and kind of flatlined in the second half of the season. So, it, we're going to see. Uh, but, you know, uh, a, f- a few people have uh, have chimed in saying they feel no need or want to watch staged matchups. Yeah. And and that and like I said, pe- people want to watch competitive matchups, and it's not truly competitive if it's one person's account and one person's borrowed account. That it's just not a truly competitive matchup. It's 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 an exhibition, at, you know. It's a, it's an exhibition at most because the person who owns the account going against the person who doesn't own the account. Can you know has a massive advantage, and and they can probably you know trounce all over them. Yeah, and, and people are saying the the right word is exhibition. Thank you, Curtis Blow. Thank you, Cascade, for also chiming in with the with the no need to want or want to watch a staged match. Yeah, people want to see DB. You know, uh, you know, people want to see DB versus Grid style matches and Zareth type Urza matches. That's what people want to see. It's not. Oh. It's not about. It's not about the content. You know, it's not. It's it's not just Cubs versus Arnold with just you know one and what you know. It's not about the content creators. It's about the account and the content creator. You I know? would rather watch. And, and, and this is going to get clipped. <laughs> this is like joke to go out on because we're going to take a break after this. So <laughs> I know this is going to get clipped and used absolutely incorrectly, but I'm going to make the joke. I would rather watch Cubs and Arnold in a jello wrestling fight <laughs> and watch this staged matchup. <laughs> We'll be back after these messages with Zareth right here on the Escape Pod cast. The Escape Pod cast with Paul Anthony and Neil Andrew Ware. Hello, Escape Padawans. It is the Llama here to remind you that the Escape Pod castaways are on social media. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. You can catch us on YouTube and on Twitch every week streaming Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, Lego Legacy Heroes Unboxed, your favorite new Galaxy of Heroes show, GA Center, and so much more. Come catch us on the web. Are you a member of Team Paul or Team Neil? Maybe you prefer story time with the llama, or dabble in the buttery side of the force with Biscuit Weasel. Or maybe you like the escape pod talents from down under, like Heinze and Scotty. No matter who you support, you can get one of my designs from the Escape Podcast merch store. Just go to escapepodcastaways.com, click on the merch link, and it will take you to the T Public site where you can support me, Mrs. Anthony, also known as Critty K. Also be sure to check out the Mrs. Anthony Shirts channel on the Escape Podcast's Discord server weekly to vote for my latest shirts in the Design Derby on Woot. Links for both of these are down below. Thank you for supporting the Escape Pod cast. Heinze from the ANZGC is officially a member of the Escape Pod Castaways. Make sure you go and search for Heinze on YouTube today because he live streams a lot of his GAC content. And not only does he do that, he also does some pretty fun videos from time to time, including a behind the screen and also streaming Jedi Fallen Order. Ah, and from time to time, this idiot might drop by. Head on over and check out Heinze today on YouTube a part of the Escape Pod Castaways Network. Back to school. The Escape Pod cast for kids. It's really cool. Hello and welcome back, Escape Padawans, to Storytime with the Llama and the Escape Pod cast for kids. This week on Storytime in our Journey Through the Journey Guide series, we are going to be focusing on the last of the three raid reward characters, and that is Darth Treya. Now, you can get Darth Treya from the heroic difficulty of the Sith Triumvirate raid. Like the other two raid reward characters we talked about in the past, the better you do in the raid, higher in the ranks as far as damage you do, the better rewards you will get and the more Treya shards you will get. Unlike the other two raids, this one is not simmable, so if you want to get Treya quickly, you will have to go in and do damage. 
Now let's take a deeper dive into the Sith leader herself. She's a dark side character, a support, like I said, a leader, and she's got the Sith tag. Her basic ability, Deceptive Strike, deals special damage to the target enemy and dazes them for two turns. Treya then inflicts all debuffs on her allies to that target enemy for one turn. If any debuffs were inflicted, reduce the cooldown of her ability Saber Storm by one. Speaking of Saber Storm, it's her first special ability and let's go through it now. Saber Storm will deal special damage to the target enemy and inflict tenacity down for two turns. If Treya has full health, deal damage an additional time and inflict ability block for two turns. If the target is buffed, deal damage an additional time and inflict healing immunity for two turns. This attack is not able to be evaded. Her second special, Isolate, dispels all buffs on the target enemy and increases their cooldowns by one and will inflict Isolate on the target enemy until another enemy is isolated or Treya is defeated. Reduce a target ally's cooldowns by one and grant them protection up 50% until the end of the encounter. Isolate cannot be copied, dispelled, or resisted, and this attack can't be evaded or resisted. Now let's take a look at the debuff Isolate. When a character has Isolate, they cannot gain buffs, cannot attack, or gain positive effects out of turn. Allies can attack or gain positive effects during this unit's turn either. Now it does affect raid bosses as well. Raid bosses can't gain buffs. Characters damaging this unit gain critical damage up and health steal up for one turn. Her leadership ability, Compassion is Weakness, grants Sith allies plus 40% critical avoidance and plus 40% potency. When a debuffed enemy takes damage, all Sith allies recover 10% health. When an enemy uses an ability outside of their turn, they take damage equal to 35% of their max health. This damage can't defeat the enemies, but this leadership ability is super useful, especially when you're going against teams like Geonosians with GBA and the brute comes up and it's taunting and you can't really attack anybody else. Her leadership ability kind of makes the other characters kill themselves. And finally, when an enemy gains a buff outside of their turn, they lose 50% offense until their next turn. Her unique ability, Lord of Betrayal, whenever an ally suffers a debuff, Darth Treya gains 10% bonus protection, which is stacking, until the end of her next turn. At the start of each Sith ally's turn, Treya dispels all debuffs on them and deals damage equal to 5% of their max health for each debuff dispelled. When an allied Darth Nihilus or Darth Scion are critically hit or inflicted with a debuff, Treya gains 12% stacking offense for two turns. Treya has two Zated abilities. It's going to be her leadership ability, Compassion is Weakness, and her unique ability, Lord of Betrayal. When it comes to the two, I would say her leadership ability is more important just because of the damage that it does to your opponents. It's super, super crucial when facing teams that do a lot of counterattacks like Geonosians, like even clones. So if you're only going to put one, I suggest you put Compassion as Weakness. When it comes to modding, you're really going to want to give her a lot of offense and a lot of critical chance. As far as teams go, it's kind of a no-brainer. Throw her in the leadership spot with Scion and Nihilus. If you're facing a really tough team that you're not sure you can beat with just the trio, throw in another couple of Sith characters. Sidious works well, maybe Sith Trooper or Sith Marauder, either of them would be great. But like I said, in most cases, you'll actually be fine, especially in GAC with just the trio of Treya, Scion, and Nihilus. That's all for me. Tune in next week for more story time with the Llama and the Escape Pod, cast for kids. Receiving incoming transmission. And welcome back to the show, ladies and gents. This week's incoming transmission is somebody from the Gambit crew. Paul, why don't you introduce our lovely guest today?
Well, you said it yourself. He is one of the co-creators of the Gambit Alliance of Creators. He is a co-host of the Gambit Podcast. And he's a close personal friend of the show, and we are honored to call him that. Uh, He is the one who faced off against the heartthrob of the Outer Rim, Urzatron, just last week. We raided him, and I'd like to say because we raided him, he ended up getting the win. I think we were the good luck for that. that that's that's my opinion, though. Hashtag and I'm just Team talking. Gambit. <laughs> <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. You know him as Zareth Prevails. We simply just call him Zareth. Welcome to the show, brother. Hey, thanks for having me on, guys. This is fun. I always, I love coming on with you guys. This is uh, this is fun to come on on my own. You guys always made me drag solo with me every other time. So, well, it's I mean, as fun. as much as I, I, I'm making solo stay out because he wouldn't move his camera so we could see the damn score during your show. How dare he? Yeah. Even if I was the one who was controlling the OBS, like how dare he? Yes. I agree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Naughty producer, you know, we, we always get, you know, we're the, we're, you, you, the, you know, I, I, I empathize with Solo because, you know, producing this, I know he produces that. So it's like he controls the stream and it's like, you, you, you know, we're the ones that get all the grief, you know, it's like move your head because that I, I must admit, because I, I had Urza's and yours on um, and it was the comment that was most <laughs> It was the most commented thing on Urza's streams. Like, who is that guy in the top right corner? I can't see the scores. Move your head. And it's like, you, you get that he cut. If he moves his head, you still won't see the score. You know, he needs to move the window. So, uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah. My heart goes out to Solo. I know. I, I, it's hard, brother, being a producer. Oh yeah, yeah. Mad respect for people who wanna who wanna control the the programs, the producing stuff. Like it's it's a lot harder than you might think, especially when you're doing it live. It, it can be stressful for sure. We're gonna say thank you to Fatafil for uh, for following. Thank you very much. Um, let's let's go into but real quick, Neil. I've done. 13 years of production in audio and video i'm happy to pass it off i'm just going to put it that way (laughs) (laughs) um so for those who don't know about you and your account zareth tell us about tell us what your what your main is and yes we know you have alts no alts during this uh no no (laughs) tell us about your main that we cover on ga center you guys might have a pretty short guest segment if you're going to just shut me down on alts, brother. <laughs> no. no, he can talk um, about alts on this show. <laughs> no. I, you can, he can talk joke. about alts on this show. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Go on. Just <laughs> so, troll him. Troll him. So, yeah, I've, uh, you know, I, my main account is 7.4 million GP. And uh, you guys have asked in the past if I'm a whale or uh, free to play. I, I definitely... Lately, I've been kind of, I mean, I've been swimming toward the the whale side of things lately, definitely. I, I still haven't bought a full character yet. Like, I feel like that's, that's like a rite of passage to truly be a whale. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I bought a few, like, I've like light whaled out on a couple things, like when they get to shipments, you know, I'll finish the finish a character off or something. I, I've, I've gone that far, uh, but I haven't bought a full character. So, um, yeah, I... I do. I've been, I've just spent a little money though. Uh, then I do have an alt who is for the rest of this season in Division Two, and then I have a new player account called Prevail Man, who's in Division Eight. So, um, I, I've got a question. Um, reg- go back to when we first had you on. So this was before you'd uh, come up with the uh, the Gambit. It was before you were doing the podcast. You, it was just you and Solo. You were doing your, uh, you were doing your spreadsheets, and you were both extremely successful with your mains because of the research that you did, because of the spreadsheets that you did, and you did not stream your GACs. How much harder has it been for you to be and find success with your mains since you? took that leap into becoming a content creator and streaming your GACs. 
Yeah, well, that's a great question, actually. I, I think I think if you looked at the numbers, I don't I don't think they've changed that much in terms of win loss. But I'll say this: it's uh, it's a lot it's a lot harder to stream. I think that we've just increased our focus a little bit. Like we've we've kind of you know just tightened our shot group, so to speak. Like we're it's it's tricky, man. Uh, like streaming, I I've had a lot of people message me after a stream, and they're like. Uh, you know, after they're done attacking, they're like, hey, I waited till your attacks were done. And then I looked at your defense and then I attacked and I'm like, oh, thanks. Uh, thanks for telling me. I don't know why you're bragging about that. But, you know, like sometimes you just don't have a back zone surprise. Like they're like, oh, yeah, I, I know your exact team comps. I even know their speeds. I'm like, damn it all. But, <laughs> you know, it, it, it can be frustrating. I'll, I'll, uh, one other thing about it, though, another aspect, and I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this. Like it's streaming a lot while you're while you're attacking. If you got the right chat, like, and we've we've certainly cultivated a lot of like a lot of the, you know, I'm I'm very very fond of our chat. A lot of times the viewers are, you know, a lot of times looking for competitive play, and so they're competitive players themselves. So sometimes you're like, man, I think I'm gonna do this, and then one of them shouts out in chat, they're like, don't do that, you moron. Then this is why, and I'm like, oh, you're right. <laughs> You're you're a moron, no. But um, but like, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's a lot. You know, chat chat can really save you too. Sometimes I, you have to learn how to filter it though, because you can't you can't just take anyone's ideas. You're like, oh, that sounds good. Sure, I'll run in there. You know, and then and then you lose. That that has happened as well. But have, have, yeah, you, have you ever? I, I've got to ask this because there's so many people who I know that. Uh, have have taken solo advice from Rambam and it hasn't worked. Have you ever taken solo advice from Rambam that then has not worked? Taking advice from Rambam? Yeah. So Rambam's no. come in and said, oh, you can solo that with Malik or you can solo that with such and such. And <laughs> oh, then you've been like, oh, right. Oh, cheers solos. for that, Rambam. And then you go in and it does not work. <laughs> I... Listen, anyone who has a Relic 8 mace is someone I'm probably not going to listen to solo advice on, is what I'm, you know, just, just going to say that, you know, and it is what it is. Now, <laughs> I'll tell you, I'm, I'm pretty skeptical of a lot of solos. I, I do solo things sometimes with Galactic Legends and stuff, but I, I'm a huge fan of playing it safe in terms of like, if I think there's a chance I can fail, like I see people using General Skywalker to solo things a lot, and it scares the heck out of me. I mean, if I see them do it, I'm like, I don't care. You know, happens to you. But for me, like, <laughs> they can stun lock you. Like, any, any manner of bad things can happen. Like, why not just take some security rather than dropping 20 banners and add a good team for no, no gain? Why not just, you know, drop a couple banners by adding some security, uh, that's that's my thought. Mm -hmm. Not that you asked, not that you wanted me here for tactics or whatever, but <laughs> I apparently went there anyways. Sorry, guys. No, I mean that the the fact that you're you're tactical, honestly, is one of the things that we love about you. As as mentioned, your counter sheets. I mean, you literally put the gun in the hands of the people that uh, face you. In that case, sometimes, um, but you you really played tactical just this past week against Urs. um so walk us through how this matchup ended up actually being um did did you realize it and reach out to him or did he realize it and reached out to you oh yeah so <laughs> You know, I saw his name in the group. I always check the group because I'm, I'm, now I'm a high enough GP. I, I usually recognize a couple people in my in every pod that I'm in. Um, you know, we call them pods because they're full of whales. But um, you know, <laughs> we for every pod I'm in, there's usually someone I recognize. And I saw his name. I was like, I don't really watch her as much. Like he's, you guys mentioned it early on your show. Like he's more of an entertainer and. Usually, if I, I have very little time to watch extra content, but if I do, I'm usually trying to, you know, stoke the competitive fires. I'm trying to trying to keep that the competitive edge, and so I'm watching watching some more cutthroat people. You know, like his, not that he puts on a bad show at all. His, it's fantastic. But uh, and it, so I saw his name, and 
you know, I, so I reached out to a few people and they're like, oh yeah, that's, that's totally him. And then apparently on his stream that night, he, some people had told him like they'd given him my logo. He had it like on his desktop. It was kind of creepy and funny. <laughs> so we saw that. And, and he was, he was like, guys, do you, like, do you think Zareth would like lose just so we could have a matchup? And like half of the people in the chat were like, Zareth doesn't lose. <laughs> Which mm -hmm. I was very proud of them for. <laughs> Cause I, I don't want to lose. I, you guys know me. I, I'm, you know, GA sender. I'm trying to, trying to be the best if I can. So, but you did end up losing. What's that? But you oh, no. did end up losing and that was what happened. No, the, the one, one match he won that week, uh, was his first match. Um, uh, to, uh, and we just happened to get paired. So, okay. So yeah, he, he won and, uh, you know, it was like a one in three chance that we we're going to get paired up in the semis and, uh, our and Jesus smiled on us all. We got it. And we are we thankful it. to I, our and Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh. It was lucky. I, like in hindsight, maybe I would have lost to do it. Like maybe I should have dropped matches to do it because it ended up being a fantastic experience. I just, I cringe to think of losing just for the, you know, I, I don't like, I don't like to lose. So <laughs> yeah, no, um, that, that, I mean, that's, that's why uh, when we did in week one, when we did the reports for both DB and for um, grid, we, we, pointed out you know we made a point of saying they both deliberately threw their second round matches so that there was that so that they were definitely going to face each other in round three um and, and they both did that they, they both i mean w w they even both just set fleet so that there was no risk of them coming up against someone who then either auto deployed or also didn't fight and then they went through that round winning simply on GP difference. So fun fact, Neil. Grid actually threw his first match when he found out that DB had lost officially. All right. Okay. Now, so Grid actually, we Grid threw the first match, bang, 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 um, getting a bunch of losses and ships because he could have possibly accidentally won. <laughs> so he purposely lost in ships to ensure this matchup happened. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, it, it, you see, here's the thing: the the, the RNG gods and RNG Jesus are paying it back to them in spades because last week <laughs> they both got triple crowns. It's like, but you know, for for your services to the community in week one, um, we're going to give you the easiest group that you could possibly get in order to achieve a triple crown. Because they both got triple crowns and they both scored eight thousands in week two, so uh, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, just so there's wish. always a shiny nickel in front of your face, Paul. I know, I know that that that's why I kind of did the little little joke. Uh, <laughs> you uh, know, I'll, you can move that down. I'll right move now. it. I'll saying. move it. <laughs> uh, so take us into take us into fight night here. Um, you're you're matched up. And how, what was it like? What, what was it like facing off and the, the atmosphere? Uh, so man, it, it was, it was like nothing else. So, I mean, it was, we, we've already over covered it almost like it, you know, the, the idea that Urz is an entertainer absolutely followed us into this match because there people were saying like oh well well like there, there's Urz the entertainer versus this like cutthroat grand arena player who just wants to win like he'll even give up like a marquee matchup against someone just so he can win you know like <laughs> you know so uh, like going in the narrative was like Zareth is just going to destroy Urz you know like that that was and and that was nice in some ways I like the vote of confidence I, I appreciate the community you know like backing me in some ways but on the other hand it's like if if i lose because no match is like rng proof regardless even if i was like miles ahead and i wasn't convinced that i was miles ahead as a player anyways um i especially because i knew who was in his war room planning his fights for him like 
I knew those guys. Those guys, those guys are jerks, man. They know their stuff. Like, <laughs> I don't, I don't want any business. I don't want to, I don't want anything to do with those guys in GAC. Like, they can stay away from me. So, you know, in a good way, like very respectful. But they, uh, <clears throat> I knew that they were planning his defense. They were studying all my videos and stuff. And I was tired. I was like, you know, what, what can I do? Like, I could go really hard on defense. You guys know I like to play the FU defense uh, often. Um, uh, but, you know, I was like, I, I'll probably just do the thing I've been doing lately, like more efficiency stuff, because it's going to be a little more exciting. So I, I just placed some like pretty generic defenses and went to bed. And then they spent, they said they spent 22 hours watching my, my videos, like, what, you know, looking at all my results, all, you know, combing through my <laughs> histories and, wow. and crafting this defense. And, um, and I know that's actually true because I, I ended up um, now that, you know, Urz is having his match now as well. He, they had actually invited me into his war room. And so I got to read some of the stuff that they were saying about <laughs> me, which is fascinating actually. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, like they, they were planning so much and I'm like, uh, Duke you lead. I, sure. Why not? Like I, I was just like throwing teams in there. So, um, you know, uh, I, I wanted something a little more sensational. So going into this, I was, people were like, oh yeah, Zareth's going to win. No problem. Like just going to, just going to kill him. And uh, we, we got a huge crowd though, man. He, he uh, built it up a lot. You guys built it up. I built it up. Like we all, we all sold it. I think, I think people wanted to see it. I mean, we, I know that, I know that Grid and DB had just had their match. I think, I think that probably just gave the community a little taste of, you know, like, oh man, let's do this. It was yeah. all Friday night, you know, it was prime time. It was, it was nuts. Yeah, no, I so. tweeted up a storm with that. I mean, I, I just, just I touched that one tweet, that screenshot of you versus us that you put on the Discord server. I'm like, okay, I'm dumping this on Twitter. You know, who, you know, who, who, right. who, who what's, what I, are you, are you hashtag T, you know, are you hashtag team the hall or hashtag team gambit? And then I tweeted it and it just went nuts. People were retweeting it. They were following it. They were responding to it. You know, um, uh, uh, Arnold re responded to it. Cubs, uh, height. It just that that had, it just went nuts. And I know. For twenty four hours. It was just it was just this build up. And then I was seeing all of the <laughs> stuff that was being written in the hall. Um, and everyone's like, "Oh, he's never lost. He's never ever lost. You're screwed." And it's it's like you you're getting his accounts mixed up. He hasn't lost on his alt. But he has lost the occasional match, and uh, you know I think that's uh, you know that was yeah. So the, it was it was brilliant. It was just it was a lot of fun. It really really was, and it did get that we did tweet up a storm on it. And um, so regarding your war organic. room, then you know that he had a big war room. Was it just you and Kleso and Solo, or did you have anybody else on Discord with you? Oh, that was it. So that was it. It was just our... the three of you. Yeah, Friday nights are Gambit fight nights, so we always have me and Solo and then a guest, and Kleso has been a longtime friend of ours anyways, he's on the Gambit crew, you know, the Gambit Alliance, he's an A-plus player too, so I was like, yeah, get him on here with us, you know, we need, we need the, all the help we can get, so it was nice, it was nice not to be alone, because, uh, you know, Urz, Urz's camera showed him as alone, but he had 10 people working with him. So ten. there was 10 people in the, and didn't, didn't it get reduced to nine? Didn't get, didn't clash. <laughs> was it clash there? Didn't clash get carbonite? <laughs> he got I, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. He, he got booted, hear. didn't he? <laughs> that was so funny. That was, that was so, he's like, oh, don't, don't be like that. It's like, get out of here, clash. You betrayed us. You betrayed us. <laughs> Yeah, I had to laugh. That was yeah, funny. He, that... I think he gave me a donation or something on my... Yeah, yeah he did. Yeah, he, yeah did. he did. He donated on your Twitch and someone said, because Cla Clash was in the war room. It's like, Clash, what are you doing? Get out of here. <laughs> that was it. He got bad. He just uh, he tried so to funny. buy then, his way back in and, and I was Clash, just like, no, Clash, get out. <laughs> then Clash turned around and donated more. So <laughs> just gave him a finger. It was kind of funny. Yeah. I mean, there was all these, there's all those little things. And in the middle of it all, so these guys crafted like this A plus ridiculous defense that, you know, like it didn't have all like really top level characters, but it was all like super well finally theory crafted. It was super hard to find any teams of mine that I saved to actually counter these. And so like you can imagine the pressure like that. I think 
I think there was like over 600 people watching at me and I'm, I'm like here, I'm like, okay, so how am I going to use Darth Vader against his stuff? You know, like uh, I'm trying to theory craft and trying to figure it out and, uh, you know, bouncing ideas off of Solo and Clesso. The chat is scrolling so fast that I can't even read it, even if I was trying to, you know, people are just like shouting like, you know, Urz prevails or, you know, kick his butt Zareth or whatever, you know, like all kinds of just... It was, it was mayhem and in the midst of it all we're just trying to like well no okay so you know bastila gives you her if, if you use Basti lead she's gonna give you you know plus tenacity and you get all this bonus protection like you use kieti Mundi with her but you know trying to trying to figure out this uh these and these teams are teams that i've never really fought because they theory craft them is just you know special for me and it was tough man and we we finally we got to we got through ground and Urz was ahead by one banner, which is not the way the narrative had been reading before, I'll tell you what. And I, I found myself like pretty proud of myself to be. Yeah, I mean, point. yeah, at, at one point you were 12 banners behind. Because I'm watching this thinking, how the hell are you 12 banners behind? Uh, well, I mean, I, say, I think I say, it was after the easy ones for last. I mean, it was after five or six battles. Days. It was five or six battles in and you were 12 banners behind. And I'm like, it was, how the it was hell? Five. How the hell are you 12 banners? And then, and then it was like, right, okay. And you slow, you just kind of like took a breath, slowed down. And then 12 became eight and then eight became seven <laughs> and seven yeah. became five and five became four. And it just slowly got down all the way until it was like one banner. And then, you know, um, you did the, uh, you both did the gentleman's thing and you agreed to go simultaneously for the final battle, which is what we had grid and db do when oh, we had their matchup we had them do their last match simultaneously so that there was no adv so that the, the initial advantage of the toying costs you know one person going first and one person going second there was no advantage to either competitor um in that final match because you were both going simultaneous right well i'll tell you i'll tell you what though this it, it added to the drama though because mm. Urs Urs took on like he used his best fleet to take on my worst fleet and so so I went in I got a 65 in fleet I'm like oh yeah like that was good like he that that's you know fleet tends to be one of my strongest places just because people hate it so much and I I don't necessarily like love fleets but like I've spent a lot of resources a lot of time in getting my fleets to the point where I can beat whatever I have it, it, that I'm facing and always keep negotiator in the back so I got a 65. I'm like, all right, we're, you know, we're good. We're good, guys. Urz went in 66. 66, yeah. And I was like, oh, like I, that, that, at that point, I was like, I could lose this. Like, I, I always, I go through these matches. I'm, I, I can't think like, don't mess up. Don't mess up. I don't, I don't think like that. I, I can't. That, that, that would mess with my confidence too much. I, I try to, maybe this sounds cocky, but I try to assume I'm going to win just because I need that confidence boost. You know, I need to make sure that I'm right there. Like that's, that's one of the key elements. And so, and so, and so this is leading into, to the final battle and the next, in the, in pretty much one of the big questions we, we wanted to get, how did going into this final battle feel and on the back end, what went through your mind? Oh man. So, <laughs> so I got through my battle. I got a 64. Uh, I was a, uh, so pretty standard, you know, take Tarkin and just uh, demolish whatever uh, nonsense is in his way. So 64, happy, you know, like, great. Urz needs a 62 to tie, and I will win if it's a tie, like technically win, because I have more GP. Um, so I'm, I'm like, okay, 62. I have a really annoying negotiator fleet, and I know the fleets aren't his strong suit. So we panned over to him. He's fighting, and someone's like... Someone in the in the chat, you know, people are like, "Well, what's happening? What's going on? Glitch and all this stuff." And um, yeah, he so he ended up dropping the fight. He didn't even win. He didn't. He wasn't able to clear my fleet. Um, and apparently, there was a glitch involved. Though the war room did go, come out and say immediately that that would not have, like he would have dropped too many banners, even if he had won, and the glitch hadn't happened. He, I still like he would have dropped too many banners. I would have still still ended up with the W. But he dropped, he did drop the whole thing. And, you know, my chat just like went totally crazy. Like literally just like hit, hit the, you know, make the, made the jump to light speed. It just, you know, yeah, everyone's no, saying we, congrats. And 
we, 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 we in the we went nuts in the after show because he went in with a negotiator and the first first reinforce he called in Plo Koon <laughs> instead of calling in um, Ahsoka and we're like oh my god what is he doing we're like screaming at the screen because you've won you, you know you, you you're already ahead and we're thinking to ourselves he's 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 done screwed up he, he's because you know it, he it just went up, nuts JJ. <laughs> it just didn't and then Plo Koon came in and. It just, yeah, it, and it just from that point on, that I mean, it was lost. You not bringing in Ahsoka straight away. Uh, he he wasn't able to clear any shit. He brought in Plo Koon. He wasn't able to do what um, he could have done if he brought Ahsoka in, which is brought Ahsoka in and reduced it to a four versus two. Instead, he brought in Plo Koon, and it was four versus three. And then your defense instantly called in a reinforcement, and it was four v four. And at that point, we're looking at this going. He's only gone in with two reinforcements. So, yeah, at that point, we were thinking, you know, you, I mean, we still thought he was going to win, but we were thinking, oh, this is going to be like in the 50s. You know, banner score wise, this was going to be in the 50s. Um, but yeah, then it just, it yeah, it just went nuts. And we're all looking at the chat and everyone, before he'd even finished the match, people in the chat, on YouTube, were like, "Yep, yeah, Zara's got this." Good, good, good. GG, Zara. Yeah, Zara's got this one. Zara's got this one. And uh, yeah, and Oof. and that was it. It was just oh, so awesome. <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what. So, I, go ahead. My, uh, we're we're getting. Uh, we we've already gone over our allotted time with you mm -hmm. here. So apologize to the wife for us. But I do have uh, one final question, and then we're going to ask you to. Uh, Tell everybody what's going on tonight and pimp your stuff. If you could, and we're going to stress this again, organically fight anybody else, who do you want to fight and why is it solo base? <laughs> if Gambit podcast may end if see me and Solo have to match up against each other. I, I don't want to do that. <laughs> There's no way I want to face solo base. Um, you know, I, I'd I'd face good old Maurice. I think that'd be a good time because we both have about the same level of accounts. He's got he's got a better account than me for sure. He's got probably better chops as a player. He's uh, he's deadly. I I would love to go up against him. He he talks smack. It's good. It'd be a good time. <laughs> I I would love to see that see Gom versus X. That would be good. Yeah, that would be a good so, matchup. That would right. definitely so you, be a good matchup. So you said Friday nights you do uh, Gambit Fight Night. Who, who's your special guest tonight? Oh, man. The vile fruit ninja Mike. The loathsome. <laughs> Only because he's he is arguably better player than either me or Solo. And we, you know, we we were just glad that he was in a different division uh, when, when GA Center finished because uh, we ended up having good results. He would have he would have diminished our results by one, uh, you know, our placings by one each. Because he, that guy doesn't hardly lose. So he's, you know, it's a joy to play alongside a guy like that. So you know, Gambit Fight Night, we always have a guest, and he's he's the one tonight. It's going to be a good time. That's awesome. I would make a terrible guest, especially this week, because I have an auto set defense. Oh yeah, that's super boring. <laughs> <laughs> so. Where do people find this fight night and where do people find your your stream and all the stuff that you work on? Sure. So um, it, on Twitch, I'm Zareth underscore prevails. Zareth is spelled X-A-E-R-E-T-H and underscore. And you can look up prevails, I'm sure. You probably know how to spell <laughs> it. I uh, won't insult intelligence here. And then on uh, YouTube, my YouTube channel is just Zareth. No, no prevailing on YouTube apparently, uh, and then the our combined the the Gambit podcast. You know we we do our podcast. You guys know that of course. Um, and then we do our fight night on Fridays. Uh, you can just search Gambit podcast, or maybe it's the Gambit podcast. Good Lord, you think I'd know that by now? But um, it's all one word though. Let's see. Yeah, feel free feel free to look that up as I make this final pitch, guys. Zareth is one of the best follows, one of the most entertaining people that I I enjoy watching. I don't get a chance to sit down and watch many other different content creators as often as I want to, but I 
I will make it at least once a week an effort to make sure that I watch Zareth. That is a wholehearted endorsement from me. So go do the, uh, you know, do the, do the same, you know, show them some love. So, all right. <laughs> is that, is there a the in your name? There is not. It's just Gambit Podcast. No so spaces, no So slash Gambit Podcast. That's it. No, all sir. right. I appreciate so it, guys. Go make sure you take uh, check that out. Guys, uh, Zareth, thank you so very, very much for taking the time out. Tell your wife, sorry we kept you longer than 30 minutes. And uh, a very, very special happy birthday to the miniest Zareth out there. <laughs> yeah, appreciate that, man. I'll pass it on. Yeah, you guys are great. I I love coming on here. Thanks for Thank you for taking five extra minutes of your uh, your valuable time to talk a little <laughs> bit longer with them. We, tr we try to keep the show under two hours, and I would love to talk to you forever, but, you know. Oh, man, it is so hard. Our podcast started at one hour, and now it's ballooned. It's like, dear Lord, please stop at two hours. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, All right, guys. I get it. Stick around uh, the final airing this month of this week, uh, this month's episode of Helly and the Noob. Um, and also, once again, a big welcome and thank you to Hot Utils for being the new official remodding service of the Escape Podcast. Make sure you check that out. The commercial's coming up in just a moment right here on the Escape Podcast. The Escape Pod cast with Paul Anthony and Neil Andrew Ware. Hotbot and Hot Utils is one of the most comprehensive tools for Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. With integration into the super useful mod tool Grand Ivory, Hot Utils can help you tackle some of the most difficult aspects of the game. Not sure how to mod your roster for a certain game mode? Use one of the many filters that automatically assigns the right mods to the right character in accordance with your guild needs. Now with the digital features that can assist you and your guild officers in territory battles and territory wars, Hot Utils is an amazing value. And don't forget the useful tools for yourself in Grand Arena, like the in-depth and customizable compare feature. Got multiple accounts like Neil, but not the time to remod them all? With this one-stop utility, you can switch between your alts and never miss a mod upgrade or a mod switch before locking into GAC or territory wars. Starting at just $5 a month, you don't want to miss out on these great tools. Hot Utils is the new official remodding service for the Escape Pod. Cast. Visit HotUtils.com to learn more. That's H-O-T-U-T-I-L-S dot com. And go ahead and spice up your Galaxy of Heroes experience. Does your guild want to tap into their full potential in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes? Yeah! For as low as $1 a month per guild member, your guild can unleash the power of the game in ways you never thought possible. Ooh. Track your arena movements, guild progression, and much, much more. Ah. Contact Shitty Bill and get one of his shitty bots on your server today. Just look for him on our Discord server and tag or message him for more information. The link for our server is below in the description. Shitty bots, don't let the name fool you. Did you know that if you signed up to become a Patreon, you could get tons of rewards? Force Go Scotty could do a roster review for you. Neil Andrew Air could share Grand Arena tactics. Or Paul could even help you get maximum stars in Geonosis Territory Battle. Ah, and you even get access into the after show. Sound good? Sign up to be a Patreon today. For as little as $2 a month, you could unlock a ton of potential content. And also get closer to the hosts. Head to patreon.com backslash the escape pod to sign up. And now time for something completely shameless. Time to rest, Helly old boy. Helix! Mm. Mm. Yes. <clears throat> rest. Helix! Yes. <clears throat> rest. Helix! <sighs> What, noob? Happy New 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 Year! Me, 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 bag. Yeah, yeah, noob. Happy yet another revolution around our star day. Whatever. Go away. Come on, Helix. It's time to celebrate... New beginnings.
Come on, noob. But... You know I don't partake in waste of time, fabricated holidays that make no logical sense... But... ...and are little more than remnants of an archaic past. But... They're a waste of time and energy. But... And I don't like them. But... Everyone celebrates the n n new year. Hellenix, it's a widespread tradition throughout the galaxy. I don't care, droid. I'm tired. I want to rest. And I want you to go away. I know. I will start the, 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 the S2E8 protocol. The what now? Protocol enacted. What, what, what's the problem this time, Hellenix? Oh, jeez. And why don't you want to celebrate the new year? Seriously? Hellenics, I, I, I know you're not motivated to create new content anymore, but as the saying goes, the show must go on. Oh, jeez. Noob? Yes, Hellenics? Go away. Seriously. But... No buts about it, mister. I just want to be left alone. I need some me time. Hellenics, I'm just trying to... Cheer you up. And get you back into the holiday spirit. Well, I was never in the holiday spirit to begin with, droid. Um, Hellenix? Ugh. You know, you're really starting to annoy me now, noob. Go away. Do whatever it is you want to do. Just leave me out of it. No. <sighs> Meatbag. You know, all I want to do is rest, noob. Don't read too much into it. I'm just tired. I'm exhausted, frankly. And I never celebrate New Year's anyway. Just go away and do whatever it is you want to do. Just leave me alone. Hellenix, we must do the skit. It requires a PSA, and we need a dramatic turn of events right at the end of this episode, because it's the penultimate episode of the season. <sighs> no arguing. Meatbag. Now, where were we? Oh, yeah, New Year's is a time for new beginnings. New beginnings are essential. We must fulfill our obligations, etc., etc., and... You know what that, that, that means. Oh, dear God, droid. What do you think you're doing? You guessed it, Hellenix. I, N-0-0-B, have a short PSA that can help... You... Understand. This isn't how any of this is supposed to go down, noob. This, this, this PSA is brought to you by N-0-0-B and the Escape Pod cast... Merch Store. Hashtag shameless self-promotion. Visit our merch store to get some awesome stuff. Doing so helps continue producing this show, ensuring many more episodes to come in the foreseeable future. New beginnings. What are they? Why do they keep happening? And who stands to benefit? In, in, in this slog of BSA, we will explore new beginnings and the many myths that surround them. All things have a beginning, a middle, and an end. This is the natural progression of things. At least, that's what the organics keep telling me. While we droids do not experience life cycles the same way that Beat bags. do, we too ponder the uncertainty of new beginnings from time to, to, to time. Are new, new beginnings a good thing or a bad thing? Today, we will try to navigate these muddy waters and determine when to look forward to a fresh start and, more importantly, when it should be avoided. We've all seen it. The new year rolls around and folks all over the galaxy begin making resolutions. Some say they'll get in shape. Others say round is a shape. Still, others ask, What are shapes? Snoob. Okay, maybe that didn't make too much sense. Perhaps I shall word it like so. New, 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 new beginnings can be beneficial for your mental health. They allow you to begin a new chapter in your life with a clean slate. Wiping away all the negativity of the past and refocusing on an optimistic and encouraging aspect for your future. Thus, new beginnings can be a great thing. Indeed. Making changes in your life should be done because you want the positive benefits that come from said changes to become a reality. What you don't, 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 don't want to do is make changes just for the sake of making changes. Your objective should be to enhance and improve your life, helping you to accomplish more goals than ever before. However, you should also be realistic, realizing that these changes may not come quickly nor easily. Making these changes can be accomplished if you A. Make a commitment to yourself to follow through with the changes. B. Understand that there may be knock-on effects from these changes and C. Believe in yourself and your ability to make the necessary changes happen. Remember, this is your life. Take ownership of it and move steadily along the path that you wish to travel. After all, 
Life is a journey full of twists and turns. Exotic planets. Gravitational anomalies. Space turbulence. And malfunctioning hyperdrives. One can never be fully prepared for what lies ahead. But if you want to travel on a previously uncharted hyperspace lane, you can't allow fear and uncertainty to stop you from realizing your dreams. Only you can make the journey of your life the most exciting adventure imaginable. This has been N-Zero-Zero-B for the Escape Pod cast. Hashtag shameless self-promotion. And new beginnings. Because that's what New Year's is all about. Wow, these, these, these PSAs really are harder to make than I give Hellenics credit for. So, do you see now, Hellenics? Wasn't that PSA helpful? Noob. Yes, Lennox? Go away. No. Instead, may I show you something that I've been working on for the last few weeks? Noob, if it makes you go away, then yes. Fine, I guess. Whatever. Show me what you got. Excellent. In honor of new beginnings, I proudly present to you a newly refurbished and fully functional TC. Fourteen. Ah! Master! TC-14? Why? I bet y'all didn't see that one. The Escape Pod. Cast. The Bridge. there everybody welcome back to the oh there's a why is there a black line above my head i don't know why is there a black line above my head go away black line there we go black <laughs> line is gone okay black, there's a black line above my head i'm like what's going on there <laughs> i must have moved the zoom by accident anyway not that the people listening care because they don't exactly they don't and care 80 percent of the audience is on is is a listening audience. listening audience so Anyway, um, I'm reporting really quick that Urz and Heinze have now both dropped one battle. So the, the live battle going on, which we'll send you to Heinze after this. Heinze and Urz have both dropped one battle as of right now. Uh, but we do have to recognize Dr. Jojo, Hellenix, Dr. Zeppers, uh, or Dread Zeppers, depending on uh, who you talk to. Um, we also had uh, Cascade uh, joining in on that. We had uh, lots of people just joining in on the nickels, making it rain nickels as we go. Thank you all to making it uh, making it a fun night. Um, with that, thank you to Zareth for spending some time with us. Um, so we're going to once again reiterate the the Friday or not the Friday the February. Uh, what's the word? February fundraiser. I think that's what we're calling it. So what we're going to be doing? Our goal through bits and subs and everything is to make the operating budget for 2021 in February. And if we do that, um, Neil and I will give up a portion of our, uh, of, of the operating budget that we, that we budgeted out, if you will, and give it back to you guys in the form of 100 pop sockets that will be made. We will be giving them out to anybody that's a subscriber at the end of February um, on Twitch. If there's more than more than that, what we'll end up doing is we will uh, we'll randomly draw names. But first crack, the first people that get them will be anybody that is a Patreon at the five dollar level or higher for the month of February, and as we roll into March. So, you'll get a pop socket. And by the way, I have it now, Neil. Mm -hmm. 
the Escape Podcast Pop Socket right here. <laughs> if you don't know what it does, if you don't know what a pop socket is, and I know this isn't working for the audio for the audio only people. Um, but there there it is on my phone. Um Escape Podcast Pop Socket. We're going to be giving those away to to Patreons first, then Twitch subscribers after that. Um, and it's it's going to be a lot of fun. It, it is going to be a lot of fun to be able to give that back to the community. And if we don't have enough Twitch subscribers at that point, what we will do is we'll find little giveaway ways to to give them out. Um, but. Thank you to all that have supported us to this point. You all are amazing. Um, and all anybody who is eligible to receive a pop socket are people that I can mail to using the U.S. Postal Service. I will pay whatever shipping it is out of my portion of the operating budget in that case. So, there we go. <sighs> what about you? What about you, Neil? How's how's the week been? It's not been too bad. Nerd Cookie fourteen oh three with a big um, gift sub from JJ. Thank you, JJ. Um, yeah, no, I've just been yeah, no, not really. I mean, I did my GAC earlier. I did do a, I did do the uh, the reveal for round one of my new my new um, taking full advantage of my new green screen. So uh, yeah, that's kind of cool. Yes. You are sitting in the throne. You I, sit on a throne of I, lies. I sit. I sit on a throne. I sit on the emperor's throne. I have my own emperor's throne that I sit on, um, and then I've just got a window open to my left, uh, and that's where I um, stream uh, my iPhone. So my main account is on my iPhone, and you know, for some reason, the whole facebook transfer thing from ios to android just isn't working at the moment and it hasn't been working for over a month i've tried to get the issue resolved so that i can do it on blue stacks um but it's not playing it's not working so i'm now using some um uh i'm using some software that allows me to share the screen and then i just sit in that chair i sit in my big comfy emperor's throne while i play on my iphone and, and uh, it's a lot of fun to watch. The way the way that you've set it up is a lot of fun to watch. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, guys, make sure you check it out. Uh, you'll be doing it tomorrow. Uh, do you have an? Uh, is it an auto set, or are you actually going to stream? Oh no, it's not. Uh, yeah, I'll stream it. It's not an auto set. It's not an auto deploy. Yeah, it's Excellent. not an auto deploy. So I will stream it at some point tomorrow. Yeah, I'll do my main. I'll do my. I'll do my alts from the comfort of my chair with my new HD camera. Because I picked up a new HD camera today, and I, I picked up a new, brand new HD camera for seven bucks, and I picked up a gorgeous tripod that my other HD camera is on um, for seven bucks today from while out out thrifting. Um, so yeah, so I'll I'll be doing my alts on Blue Stacks from my chair, and then when it comes to doing my main accounts, that's where that's when we go to full green screen. All right. Well, let's let's get into Patreon's uh, choice questions here. Uh, Geek Girl and Zaz both have three questions for us each. Geek Girl says, "What is um, uh, what's your favorite bad song?" Oh man, <laughs> that would be um, Electric Sixty Six. That gay bar, gay gay bar, yeah, yeah. Electric Sixty. I okay. You know what? Is, Electric is 66 yours? Game Boy. Because it's a bad song, but it's That's got yours. such a catch. It's so catchy. You just want to sing along to it. Are, are you claiming that as yours? Yeah, that's mine. Then I can't do mine. I can't claim it as mine. You know what? I will. I, I'll, I'll say I'm going to claim that as mine as well. Because I agree that is a great song. And I think we're going to have to claim each other's at the same time on this one, too. Favorite bad movie? Basketball? No, because Basketball's not a bad movie. Oh, God. <laughs> it's not a bad movie. That is a good movie. Favorite bad okay. movie for me would have to be Earth Girls Are Easy. Okay, Biodome? No, because that's only good. That, I, I only like Biodome when I'm stoned. I don't like I, it sober. I, like I, can't, I, can't, I can't stand that movie if I'm stone cold sober. 
I only like it when I'm stoned because it's got stoners in it. And that's why it's funny. Because it's like... <laughs> yeah. Paulie and Shaw is only funny when you're, when you're stoned. All right. Favorite, favorite bad artist... Uh, that uh, artists that you like that most people consider bad. I don't know. Do people are people still considering Fall Out Boy bad? I love myself some Fall Out Boy. Oh, oh, sorry. When you said artist, I thought I thought you meant like artist, as in like you know, no, a painter artist. or a sculptor. Because I was going to say Salvador Dali, because he just does some messed up stuff. Clocks. Hell yeah, I agree. MC Escher, Salvador Dali, yes, but uh, musical artist, musical artist, MC Hammer. You so so you're gonna pump out an MC Hammer album at any time? Um, no, but if 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 it's on, I won't turn it off. <laughs> well, of course you can't turn it off because you can't touch that. No, exactly, you can't touch this. All right, uh, Zaz says, "What was your favorite toy as a child?" Um, uh, Mattel, me, it, Mattel's, the, the Mattel He-Man figures. For, for me, it was this, it, Nintendo sold it as a way to broadcast your, your audio on a stereo system. And it was an RF transmitter. And I used that little RF transmitter to provide a, um, to provide a, radio show for my parents i found a way to hook it up to to another stereo system and i used it to to do that it, mm -hmm. it was a lot of fun so that was my favorite toy as a child uh what was the toy you always wanted but never got millennial falcon um i'm gonna say a good rc car like one of the ones that you know stood yeah. the test of time oh i mean i i had i had good my, my grandmother my grandmother used to spoil me rotten when it came to radio if, whatever the whatever the goot that whatever the, the 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 gucci um radio control car was that was out at the time my grandmother always got that from me. i had a night rider radio control car once that was awesome i had nice. a, a i had a kit i had a kit yeah and it was good um but yeah no i always wanted um i always wanted um a millennium falcon because when you're a pub, sorry, what, what, what's referred to as a pub rat. So I was a pub rat for most of my, in fact, for, yeah, for the majority of my single digit childhood. And uh, when we go in, when we would go into school, the last day of school before the Christmas break, everybody brought a toy in to play because there were no lessons because the teachers wanted to be, you know, off doing stuff. And um, somebody brought in, one kid brought in a Millennium Falcon. I kid you not, a kid brought in a Millennium Falcon. You know, it's it's just before Christmas, 1985, and this kid brings in a Millennium Falcon because everybody wants to bring in what they brought. Because mo most most people would, most kids would just like ride into school on their bikes because everybody wanted to show off their new BMXs. Um, and this kid brought in a Millennium Falcon, and everybody wanted to play with it. Everybody wanted to play with it, and that was it. I just wanted a Millennium Falcon for Christmas, and you know, I asked for one. <laughs> For like three Christmases afterwards, and I did not get one. So, yeah, I'll get one eventually. I will have, <laughs> you know, I will have a Millennium Falcon hanging from my rafters behind me at some point. I've got a bunch of other ships. The Millennium Falcon is one of, one of the ones on my list. I've got my eye on a Slave One. All right. So Zaz is asking this question, so you're going to have to translate for me. Are you any good at assembling flat pack furniture? Yes. Translate that for me. Is he talking Ikea? Yeah, he's talking Ikea, yeah. Almost everything in this room. Well, when once I get back to my studio, right now we're on the Millennial Fulcrum. Uh, but everything in my studio has is pretty much an Ikea original. <laughs> uh, you see, bef 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 before I... You see, I... To, to people in the UK, Ikea was just kind of like ripping off. You know, everybody else was like, oh, wow, Ikea, flat pack stuff. You see, in the UK, we had Argos. We had Argos. We had Littlewoods. Um, so flat pack furniture was nothing new to British culture when Ikea came around. Ikea just um, displayed their stuff um, in store. 
and then you would buy it flat pack and take it away and build it yourself. Argos and Littlewoods would show you what the furniture looked like in a catalogue. And then you would buy it based on the picture you saw in a catalogue. You'd buy it, it'd come in a box, flat packed, you'd take it away and put it together. What IKEA did different from the UK was, well, why don't we just have a showroom where we show everything built and then people buy it flat pack? In the UK, you would just buy it based on a photograph in a catalogue. So IKEA right. was nothing new to people in the UK because we're used to buying flat pack furniture based on a photograph in a um, uh, in a catalog. All right, two more questions, and then we're gonna uh, we're gonna uh, send it on over to Heinze here and uh, send the millennial fulcrum into hyperspace. Uh, last question from Zazzy added one more. What was your first ever job? I can't remember if my first ever job was the. Um, not cold calling it was warm calling people who signed up to take surveys i would call them and give them surveys or if it was funco land and that dates me right there um my first i mean are we talking like part-time jobs like you know if you're a kid delivering newspapers or so my first full-time Good. job was funco land okay my, my first... first my first yeah. full-time permanent job was in the army before then, it was all like part-time and temporary work. Um, but yeah, my first full-time permanent job was in the army at 18. All right. Um, and then the last question was from JJ Manners. How many Star Wars action figures do you think that you buried in the garden as a child? Zero for me. Yeah, zero. I, I, I never I never buried them. I, I was always given G.I. Joe figures or He-Man figures when I was a kid. Because He-Man, he, He-Man Mattel figures were bigger and more robust than Star Wars figures. So I was always given He-Man and G.I. Joes as, uh, as a kid. And right. my, my pocket money went on marbles. All right, sorry, I'm, I'm over here looking at the display port of the Millennial Fulcrum. I'm looking at it, and I can tell you guys right now, Heinze is up six points as we go to go ahead to rate him. Anything before we uh, close it up uh, for the day? No, or we're good, week? mate. All right, let's go do the raid, gentlemen. Um, join us next month. Remember, um, if you're going to do a Patreon. Uh, in February and March, if you do both, um, you'll automatically get the pop socket if we get to the 2,000 goal. So we'll uh, we'll definitely be um, we'll definitely be touting that throughout. We're gonna send you over to Heinze right now. Urs just used his C to beat Ray, so Palpatine just beat Ray. We're gonna see how that goes. Send you over there after we uh, run the credits. Um, and we'll give you a, give you an update just as we did this week on who won both of the matchups next week on the Escape Podcast. Be nice to each other, damn it. Take care of yourselves. Neil? Yeah. Push the button. You got it, mate. It's half an hour, folks. What's going on? Where the hell are we? Paris? Thank you for pressing the self-destruct button. Attention! This is Colonel Sanders in forward command. Abandon ship! Abandon ship! All personnel proceed to escape pods! Close down the circuits! Evacuate the suit! So the destruct mechanism has been activated! Abandon ship! Where is it? Where is it? It's gonna be here! Out of order! Even in the future, nothing works! This ship will self-destruct in exactly 10 seconds. <laughs> Counting down. Just kidding. Three, two, one. Have a nice day. Thank you. Hello, friends. This is Thaddeus from Going Nerdy, the Escape Pod cast was filmed in front of a live studio audience full of tweaked out. Murder bears. Sit, Boo Boo, sit. Good dog. <laughs>